Hi Rocketeers, I'm Charlie Garcia, and this week I'm back with a high-powered rocketry clip show. My journey to aerospace engineer certainly wasn't a straight path, but like many kids, I enjoyed building model rockets. Probably unlike most kids, I kept building larger and larger rockets, though. Speaking of journeys, I was traveling all this past week, so here's some video I took in a recent rocket launch. Rockets are a great hands-on way to apply engineering principles, and they can range in complexity from three fins, a nose cone, and a rocket motor to multi-stage behemoths with staged parachutes, live telemetry links, and many other nifty high-tech features. If you ever get a chance to go to a National Association of Rocketry launch or a Tripoli Rocketry Association launch, you can see many rockets built by many rocketeers displaying many, many cool features. Three weeks ago, I was in Geneseo, New York to attend a rocket launch with a few friends. I'd brought down a rocket, as had several of my friends. For this flight, I had prepared a brand new rocket to replace the one that experienced a forward closure failure back in 2018. In my typical fashion, the rocket wasn't quite done when I got in the car for the six-hour drive down to New York. I spent the first day working on my avionics bay. For avionics, I've got a stratologer and a telemetrum for dissimilar redundancy. The stratologer records little data, and the telemetrum has a full sensor suite and live telemetry, so combining the two gives me a chance to, at least somewhat price-effectively, get all the data I need for my flight. After crashing in a hotel, we went to a field the next day. There were some incredible flights by other rocketeers, and my friend Andrew was one of the first off the rails. Uh, yeah, this is a good sized rocket, so it should, should make a lot of noise going on the way up. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one, go. After the Patriot, he flew a tube fin rocket. Tube fins are a little bit stronger than your normal fins on a rocket, however, they're a lot draggier, so there's a trade-off inherent to them. Left hand side over here, we got Andrew Riley from Boston, Massachusetts. He has a scratch-built tubular going up on a Loki I-430. Electronic ejection, dual deployed 600 feet. Ready, Andrew? Yep. He's right here. Right there. Oh, Ready to go in five, four, three, two, one. Two of my other friends attempted to increase their rocket certification level. Unfortunately, both of the L2 certification flights had some bad luck. The first flight, this white and purple rocket, had a great flight until midway through recovery, a component separated and fell off of the parachute. Yes. Certification flight going in. Five, four, three, two, one. Up with a bang. Aw, oh, I got that. The other rocket was an incredibly awesome minimum diameter mock buster. Ready to go it in up. three, two, one. And hit escape velocity? Maybe it was ballistically recovered? It could have landed far away, but the world may never know. Neither the onboard telemetry system nor the onboard radio beacon could be picked up again, and we never found it. One of the last flights of the first day was a massive Saturn V replica. The flight was, uh, well, interesting. Everything landed safely, but as an aerospace engineer, I feel qualified to state that they were having a flamey end up, pointy end down problem. After we packed up the rockets for the day, we took a quick jaunt up to Niagara Falls, which was spectacular and absolutely beautiful. Then, another hour back to the hotel, and we had a quick night's sleep before we were ready to launch again. That next day, I flew my drone around the launch site a little, and then prepared my rocket for flight. I loaded the motor, armed the cameras, and got the rocket out of the launch pad. I armed the recovery system and had a crisis. Only one of my two recovery systems was showing go for flight. Now, having one working system is enough to safely recover the rocket. But having something not working means that something isn't right. There are two schools of thought here. First, yay for redundancy. You have a working system, even though one is broken. But second, something is broken on the rocket, so clearly it isn't ready for flight. It would have been a real shame to come all this way and not fly a rocket, but I wasn't going to launch a rocket that wasn't ready. So I swallowed my go fever and I took it off the launch pad. I opened up the avionics bay and fixed the wiring error. I made it out back to the launch pad in 10 minutes. I was able to get on the last salvo of the day and my rocket was one of the last ones in the air. Surely I practiced on the last couple of rockets, so there's a chance I'll be able to catch this on the way up. Awesome, thank you. Especially if I stand pretty far back, if that's okay with you. Yep. Okay. Why is it taking a time lapse? Oh wait, did you uh, did you put buttons on this? Did I put rail buttons on it? Yeah. Yeah, I was. I thought you were gonna do a flyaway. Is why I'm asking. I was going to, and then didn't. 
Joseph has already come back. We can go look more. Yeah, Joseph said he's going back out. You have to lift it. Drop it. Drop it. Here. Drop it. All right, listen, well, so wind's doing bait. It was a really great flight. I did deploy one of my parachutes a little prematurely, but this was a ceiling problem where some epoxy leaked and allowed high pressure gas to confuse one of my sensors. One <laughs> rocket named Stella. Right. It's its first flight. He's expecting 4,400 feet, 401 oh, miles per one. hour, it says here, on a J600. Go deploy yep. with the main at 600. Ready, Charlie? Yes, sir! Three. Two, one. <laughs> little pump yeah, was supersonic. The last few reds have been lighting nice. Keep an eye on it. That's after you right there. <laughs> oh, there's a little pump. Okay, she's separated. Keep an eye. Woo -woo! Yep, yeah, you're good. Is that the main? It looks really slow. It looks really slow. As a wild man, that's the main. Better than the alternative. You got a tracker. Yeah. Maybe I didn't have enough shear pins. Yeah, that's definitely the main. No, that's sorry. It's coming down at you have a telemetry. 10 meters a second. Yeah, it's the main. <laughs> at least it wasn't uh, wasn't the other way around. Yeah. You don't have to worry. Yep. No stress now. Just waiting. Take a while. It's only 3,000 feet up there. Yeah, the tracker's still reading. It's beeping away happily over here. Ready, Keep Chris? an eye on it. It'd be easy to forget. Three, then... two, yeah. one. That was fast. I got something on the video. Probably wasn't very it. good. Don't worry about it. At least liftoff was good, and then it. Alright, that wraps up this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will return to my regularly scheduled Liquid Rocket Engine content next week with some machine shop footage. I've been working uh, since I got back and there's some really cool stuff to show off. I also just got a package in today that has the parts necessary to build an electroforming rig. I've already tried twice and hopefully this new one will be a little better. If you'd like to see more tangentially related rocket videos, make sure you're subscribed. Otherwise, I promise we'll be back to the Liquid Rocket Engine stuff soon.